Well, welcome back to another video. In today's topic, we are talking about how fast your aperture or your iris actually should be. Okay, I feel like I talk about this a lot in the comments or in direct messages, people asking me about especially zoom lenses and fast apertures. Now, there are a few that have fast apertures and that comes at a price tag, but I wanted to talk about a couple different uh, scenarios here and why your aperture isn't as big of a deal as you might think. Okay, so first off to uh, explain everything, usually when we're producing this cinematic image, we want a very, very fast aperture. We want all that depth of field that we can get. Like what I'm shooting on here, this is an F2 lens at 24 millimeters. So the camera is about there to me. And you can see the background is slightly blurred out because I'm running it at F2 and the Sony has great eye tracking autofocus. So I stay in focus. Um, other lenses that I use a lot when I'm shooting these concert films is like this the Sigma 18 to 35. This is a 1.8 uh, lens, which means it has a 1.8 aperture, which means it's very fast. And that depth of field is pretty crazy. And you can get some really fun bokeh and that uh, lots of compression with that blurry background. On the flip side, this is a zoom lens. This is a 150 to 600, also made by Sigma. Um, and it has a aperture of five to 6.3. So five at 150 and 6.3 at 600 millimeter. Now, why is that a big deal? Well, because the higher you bring your aperture, so 1.8, lots of blurred background to 6.3, not so much blurred background. Okay, so if I took this lens and went from 1.8 to 6.3, you would go from having lots of that bokeh, lots of that compressed background that's out of focus to everything's in focus basically. So for example, if you're shooting landscape photography and you want to see like your foreground, your midground, and your background all in focus in this big landscape, you run a wide lens and you run your aperture at 6.3, F11, something like that, to where everything's in focus. Now, if you want to just see your foreground and have your background all blurry or vice versa, you would bring it down to F2.8 or F1.8 or something like that. That's how you achieve those kinds of looks with a wide lens. Now, with a lens like this that zooms into 600 millimeters, what you're going to be getting is a lot of compression. So on top of your aperture adding that blurriness to the background, you're also getting compression because you're zooming in 600 millimeters. When you're zooming in on a subject, because of all that zoom compression that you're getting, it's actually getting way finer. So to be able to keep things in focus at 600 millimeters, 1.8 is actually kind of impossible, especially if you have a moving subject. Um, now you have 2.8, so there's a lot of zooms out there like the Canon 25 to 250, which I use a lot, which is an F2.8 lens. Um, at 250 millimeters, you can be at f2.8, which is awesome. It's an amazing lens, but it's still not even 600 millimeters. Some of the bigger lenses out there for cinema broadcasts, like the Canon 50 to 1000, it's like f9 at a thousand millimeters. And the brand new Fuji 25 to 1000 box lens that's a PL mount, it's 2.8, but not all the way through. At 1,000 millimeters, it's, I don't remember the actual specs, but it's like 6.3 or something like that at 1,000 millimeters because it would be extremely hard to keep f2.8 in focus at 1,000 millimeters. And those lenses cost, you know, the 50 to 1,000 is a $80,000 lens and the 25 to 1,000 is like a $200,000 lens. So again, crazy prices and yet they still don't do it. Okay, going back to lenses like this, now uh, these are photo DSLR lenses. We still use them for cinema broadcasts all the time. And I'm gonna show you some examples here of using this lens and using the cinema 25 to 250, just so you can get an example of how good this lens still looks, costing the $1,500 that it does. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples here. Um, this is something that we shot of Christine Kane. Um, at a conference and I wanted to show you some examples. So 
as you can see in the shot, this is a 25 to 250. Um, this is at about 200 millimeters and you can see there's nice uh, depth of field behind her with like the instruments blurred out and stuff. Um, let's scrub forward. Now this is the 150 to 600, which is slightly darker. Um, I don't think it was lit as well. Um, also, it is a higher aperture, so it is going to be a little bit darker, so you need to ISO up. But as you can see, with all the compression of that 600 millimeters, and this is about at 400, you can see how everything is still blurred out behind her. Let's uh, move forward here. Same, back to the 25 to 250, back to the, so that's 25 to 250 that's 150 to 600. So you can see the compression behind her is still there, even though we're using a different lens. Now let's get into some vocal stuff. I'll actually push play so you can see this. Um, you can see how blurred out the background is behind her still, and this is the 150 to 600. So you can still see how good it looks. Same with him. Lots of compression, lots of depth of field that we have going on here at I believe this is around 500 millimeter, maybe close to 600. And I'll skip forward here to another shot. So this is the 25 to 250. Nice movement there on that camera. And this is at 250 millimeters and you can see the compression that there is. Let's go back a little bit. Um, oh, let's go forward, sorry. The same thing with this shot 250 millimeters you can see all the the depth of field and the compression that we have going on here i hope seeing some of those examples helped but i tell people this all the time or follow cam for speaking even if i have that 25 to 250 which i love i don't run it at f28 I run it at about f4, four and a half for speaking anyways, because with that subject going across your screen like this, and the fact that your camera is panning like this means that they're not staying the same distance away every time that they walk in front of your camera, means keeping them in focus is gonna be way harder at f2.8 than it is at f4. So typically I don't even run those lenses at f2.8 for speaking anyways. I'm gonna be running it at f4, f4 and a half, maybe even five, just to help the operator keep the subject in focus as much as possible. Now, to quickly talk about some different zoom options. Um, this is an older lens from Sigma. They have a 60 to 600 now, which is probably what I'd recommend. Same f-stop range, but um, at least you get a little bit wider of a shot. Sigma also makes a 120 to 300 if you don't need as much reach, and that's an f2.8 lens, which is also really good. Um, quite a lot more than this lens is. Then you have the classic 100 to 400 that Sigma and Canon makes. They make the new RF 100 to 500. Sony makes a 200 to 600. Um, Canon now makes a 100 to 300. That's $10,000. That's f2.8, which in my opinion is not quite worth the money for what we're doing. I would rather have something like this or get the Sigma 120 to 300, which is $7,000 less and f2.8. Anyways. Um, yeah, there's lots of different zoom options out there. Oh, 28 to 300, Canon makes that lens as well. That's also a really cool lens. Again, not a fast aperture, but a really cool lens. Okay, so I hope that this video helps. I feel like I answer this question all the time. People wanting to get a zoom lens for their cinema broadcast and they're looking at something like this, which is the 150 to 600, and they're saying it's 6.3, it's way too dark. Now, you are going to have to ISO up your camera to compensate for that slow aperture, but, with proper lighting and modern cameras, usually it's not a big deal. Now, if you're rocking an old Blackmagic Studio camera, you're gonna get a lot of noise in that thing. But if you're you know, running a Pocket 6K, fantastic noise ratio. Like it's not a noisy sensor at all. You would easily run this lens on there and crank that ISO and you're not gonna have a problem. Komodo's, you know, you start getting a little noisy around that 1600 to 2000 range. So. That's just something to think about, but most of our sets are lit insanely well to where we're not having to run, even with ISO or apertures like this, we're not having to run our ISOs at 2000. We're running them at 800 still. Or with a lens like this, we're running them at 250 if we have to. You should add ND, but you get the point. It is lots of light creates great images. 
So I would end with saying, don't be afraid of picking up a lens like this. I bought this for $700, by the way, um, and running it for your follow cam. I think it's a fantastic option and don't be worried about that 6.3 aperture.